I'm Tom from the Physics Classroom with another video from our Task Tracker tutorial series. In this video, I will do three things. First, discuss the variety of ways that you can find calculator pad problems for your problem set. Second, discuss how to take an existing calc pad problem set and customize it to your liking. And third, how to create a calc pad problem set totally from scratch, either using problems that we have written and provided or ones that you've written yourself. Let's get started. We have another video titled Creating a Calc Pad Problem Set, which forms somewhat of a precursor to this video. And if you haven't watched it and aren't familiar with how to create a basic problem set, you may want to go watch that video first, then come back and watch this one. I've left a link to that precursor video in the description section of this one if you need to watch it. Now I'm going to begin by discussing one of several ways, in fact, what I think is the best way to find problems in Calculator Pad. I'm on the home page of the physics classroom and click over here on the side uh, navigation area and I'm going to go to the calculator pad. There you'll see our topics. We have several of them. We have about 2,500 problems and we're still going strong creating more. Uh, and so these problems, this bank of problems forms a great resource for you to create your own problem sets. So in order to do so, you need to find what problems you wish to use. So I'm going to begin by just going to 1D Kinematics, and we have 23 problem sets. You see them named there. And um, I, I'm getting ready to do some lessons on free fall, and here's problem set K19 free fall. Now, make a note, it's set K19, that's how we name it on free fall. I'm going to open it up, and you see the problems once you open it up. Now, if you don't have an account, you can always use the, the public version here of these problems, and this forms sort of the teacher preview version of our problems. And you'll notice how they're named. Problem one is named K19Q1. So we're in set 19 of kinematics, thus the K19, and then the Q1 for the first problem. And we can continue through. If we look at the fifth problem, it's K19Q5 and so forth. So there's a, a rhyme and a reason to our nomenclature for naming these problems. Now knowing the name of a problem is pretty important because when you want to create your own problem set, you have to tell Task Tracker which problem you want and knowing the name of it is rather useful. Now I'm going to exit out of here and go back to that listing of kinematic problem sets. I'm going to go to K20 and as you might expect, those are named K20Q1, K20Q2, K20Q3, and so forth. Now, after I've been kind of doing some studying, I've uh, kind of come to the conclusion I'd like to assign this problem set K19 to my class. So what I'm going to do is go to the My Account page, log into Task Tracker, and create that as a problem set and learn how to customize it. So I'm now logged into Task Tracker and I'm back on my account page. I'm going to do the next several steps rather quickly because we have a little video on how to do this. It's the precursor video assigning a calc pad problem set. So I'm going to go to my classes and once in my classes I'm going to go to period one science. I'm going to make a kinematics, 1D kinematics calc pad problem set. So I'm going to open up that topic and then I'm going to create new task. When I create new task, I get a couple of drop-down menus. Public assignments here is what I want. What we mean by public assignments are assignments the physics classroom has created, and that's what I want to make. So I'm going to go to problem set K19, free fall 1, and I'm going to fill out this form. Then I submit the assignment and I'm ready to launch it into the assignment builder. And in that other video, assigning a calc pad problem set, we discussed how to fill out the assignment configuration. Save the assignment. And now what I'm going to do is slow down a bit and talk about how to customize this. I'm going to scroll down to the first question. And you see these icons over here that are action icons. The pencil means edit, so you can actually edit a problem. That's a whole nother video. The icon right here is the duplicate problem. It was easy to make. You can duplicate the problem. I have two of them with different numbers. The plus means you can add a problem, and I'll be discussing that. The minus means you can take a problem away. Now, I have 14 problems here, and I don't like 14 problems on an on a, a evening homework assignment. So I'm, I'm going to get rid of some. So I, I didn't like 14 anyway, so I'm going to get rid of it. And 
uh, 13 I like, but 11, no, I'm going to get rid of 11 and so forth. And I can remove problems by simply clicking the, the minus icon, the delete icon. And, and so I, I've done that for a few. Uh, one thing I noticed when I studied this set is, is this problem this problem number 10 down here at the bottom. It's, it's actually called K19Q12. I want it to be first. So I'm going to click these up arrows. And as I click the up arrows, I begin to move K19Q12 upwards. I want it to be the first problem shown. All right, just what I wanted. So I'm clicking it up every time I move it up, it moves one problem forward. So I have to scroll up one problem forward. And, and now I have it as the first problem. So the up and down arrows allow you to move problems around. Uh, then I, I, I noticed this problem three. Yeah, I, I've talked about this a million times. So I'm going to click on the show scoring customization. And I'm allowing 10 attempts on every problem. But, you know, this one, I'm just going to give you four. All right. So, I mean, I discussed it so much. You, you should get it done in four. I'll, I'll make them all unpenalized, and, and, and that's it. And then I'm looking at another problem here, maybe, and I say, well, this problem here, uh, I, I'm going to just, you can have as many attempts as you want, none of them penalized. And um, yeah, I, I think it was a hard one. And, and then finally, I saw one problem here that I thought I want it to be worth more points than the other. So I'm going to make it worth three points instead of the one point like every other problem. So what I'm beginning to do is customize the scoring and the attempts on a per problem basis here. And I'm also moving problems around, taking problems out. And like I said, we'll have a, a video coming out soon on how to add a problem. Uh, either one you've written or one that we've written. So um, that's uh, that's how to customize a problem set. I'm going to save my assignment. I'm going to close it, and I'm now done with that particular problem set. Uh, now, one thing about this is you can customize a problem set before you assign it. But after you assign it, you can't like remove a problem or add a problem or change the scoring of a problem. Um, that that's that's something you can't do. But before you assign it, those are things you can do. But once students start on it, you can't change the problem. Now I'm getting ready to start a week of free fall in my physics class, and I want to make a problem set, a custom calc pad problem set, with 12 problems in it that's due at the end of the week. After some lab work and some discussion, I'll start teaching students how to use kinematic equations to solve free fall style problems. So I'm back on the CalcPad 1D Kinematics page, and there you see Create New Task. I'm going to click on that button, and when I do, the usual pops up, and this top menu has several options. Public assignments means create a new CalcPad problem set that is made from one of our assignments. New custom assignment is what I want to do. So I'm going to create a custom assignment of my own. The other options I'll talk about real quickly. Copy my assignment means you'll copy an assignment that exists in this class and you'll maybe edit it afterwards. Link an assignment means you're going to link an assignment from another class to this class. Could be your colleagues, it could be yours. Linking means that uh, whatever change you make in that assignment in that other class, the change will automatically show up in this class as well. In other assignments, like you have a colleague and they made an assignment and you want to use it, they said it's pretty cool. And so you get their GUID or ID number. I'll show you where that is in a moment. At any rate, what I want to do is make a new custom assignment. So now you do the usual, you fill out the form. I'm going to do that real quick. Now that you filled out your form and you saved the assignment, you can launch the assignment in the Assignment Builder, and you can do the usual here in the Assignment Configuration, uh, in the Assignment Configuration box. So now I have an empty problem set, and I'm ready to add my 12 problems to them. So if I scroll down, I notice at the bottom there's no problems, but there is an Add Problem button. And this blue Add Problem button shows up when there's no problems. Once you have a problem in your problem set, that problem has a plus button on it, and you use the plus button to add a problem. So I'm going to click on the Add Problem, and this shows up, and I have a decision to make. Create a blank problem, meaning you write the problem, or select an existing problem, perhaps one you've written or one that we have written in the physics classroom. So I'm going to select existing problem. And I get to our search window. 
And there are several ways to search for the problems, but the way I'm going to search for it is I'm going to search by the problem name. And the particular problem names that I want to start with is from problem set K20. And those problems were named K20, Q1, K20, Q4, and K20, Q5. Those are the four I'm looking for. So I'm going to click on the search button. And every problem that starts K20, Q shows up there. And there's a little select problem out here on the right side. I'm going to select the first problem. And from my notes, I'm going to select the fourth problem. And from my notes, I'm going to select the fifth problem. And as I make those selections, you'll notice they show up over here. I'm going to just add the problems right now to the problem set, and then go to the third problem and repeat for problem set K21. I hit the plus button. I just want to select existing problems, and it's from set K21, Q, and I have several I want to choose from. So I do my search, and here's what is returned when I do the search. And I want Q1. So I'm going to add these problems to my problem set. So you repeat this process for all the problems that you need. Whenever you need to add more problems, you go find the plus sign. I want to add my last five problems after problem seven. So I go to problem seven and hit the plus sign there. And I do the usual. And I'll do this one pretty quickly. Once you finish adding all the problems, go ahead and save your problem set. And there I have my 12 problem problem set due at the end of the week. I'm ready to assign it to students and let them know it's on their assignment board. I want to finish up by discussing other ways to find problems for your customized CalcPad problem set. So I'm going to click on a plus button to add a problem and select existing problems. Here's our little search area of CalcPad. I've been using this text field where I type in some text, mainly the name, and it looks for any problem that has matching, matches that what I type into the text field. But the problem owner field is I could search for any problem that I've written that I own, my problems. Public problems mean those belonging to the physics classroom or those of other people in my subscription, other teachers in my subscription. So that's another way you can narrow or widen your search. I'm going to pick public, just the physics classroom. Now, I can also pick by topic. So we put all our problems inside of topical areas. So you could click for CalcPad 1D Kinematics and do a search, and you'll get a long list of every problem we have, more than 100, in, in the CalcPad 1D Kinematics area. You could narrow that search by difficulty. So maybe you just want the most difficult of problems. So uh, you, you may be looking for the range from hard to very hard. And you click search, and you get a whole list of problems. The difficulty level very hard is our hardest ranking. And the difficulty hard is our next to the hardest ranking. And, and that's a little difficult. One person's hard is another person's easy, I know. But um, we did our best and, and tried to rank them accordingly. Now, another thing that you could do is, is you could type in right here uh, the tags. We tag every one of our problem with some search criteria. And if you tap on that and scroll, it's a pretty lengthy list. But you don't have to go through the list. You can start typing. So I'm going to start typing free fall. And, and there it is. I'm going to look for every problem on free fall and, and maybe keep the search wide, including all difficulty levels, or keep it relatively narrow, looking for easy to hard, but not the very easy or the very hard. And I click search, and now I got several problems. And you notice over here, there's some rankings, uh, ratings as to the difficulty level. So that's some ways that you can use this little search area to search for problems to find ones that you're looking for. This is how you create a customized CalcPad problem set. I hope it's been helpful. Leave a question or comment in the comment section below if you like. And um, I'm Tom, and I thank you for watching.